Hi everyone, once again my good friend Zulu Fight Runner has provided me with a bunch of stupid. And not just a single video of stupid, this time he has presented me with an entire channel full of stupid. Thanks Zulu. The name of the channel is Spirit Science and with a name like that I hardly need to do anything, do I? Well, I, I will. Let's have a look at the first video on that channel. Spirit Science 1. Thought. Have you ever had a moment where you knew exactly what someone else was going to say? About two or three seconds before they even started talking? We've all had experiences like these at least a few times, some many more than others. There are even a few people who can kind of tap into this experience quite easily. I believe one of the terms for it is psychic? Let's say for the sake of discussion that when you think of something, anything, it appears right in front of you. No, not physically, but let's say it appears in a different realm that's in and around all of us. For now, let's just call it the thought realm. When an inventor gets an idea, this idea can quickly spread throughout all of his colleagues and friends. Don't think of thoughts as separate, but as a whole that everyone is latching onto. Okay, let me see if I get this straight. When an inventor has an idea, he places that idea in front of him on some other plane of existence or whatever, and when other people pick up the idea, it's because they, for lack of a better word, see it. It has nothing to do with the, you know, the inventor talking about it or anything like that, uh, which would be a much simpler explanation. Have you ever heard of Occam's razor? Just, just putting it out there. So with thoughts connecting with other thoughts comes our first big realization. This new understanding of how intertwined we truly are. Up until recently, humankind has always understood simply that they were connected only through their physical being. The fact is, we're not. Sure, if by fact you mean unsupported assertion that you pulled straight out of your ass. Facts are demonstrable. How do you suggest we demonstrate this connection? Think about almost every creature on Earth. What do we really know about the bond that connects them? Geese are able to travel long distances, switching who flies in front like clockwork. Many fish swim in large schools, and we know that they don't have a form of verbal communication. That's an argument from ignorance. Nonverbal communication does not mean telepathy. There are lots of forms of nonverbal communication. For example, I'm a martial artist, and um, I can tell an attack is coming a fraction of a second before it even begins. It's not because I'm psychic, it's because I can read the attacker's body language. It's, it's pretty obvious, especially if the attacker is untrained. How hard do you think it is for a goose to see that the guy in front is getting tired? Do you ever have a morning where you wake up grumpy and stub your toe and think, oh, this is just going to be one of those days, and find that the entire day afterwards just goes terrible? What about the days when you wake up excited and happy and ready to go? Your whole day is just excellent in all of the right ways. The reason these differences in how your day goes is because of your emotional state. That's a textbook case of post hoc ergo propter hoc. That would be the logical fallacy of assuming that if A happens before B, that means A must have caused B. Causal relationships have to be demonstrated, not just asserted. The people who are most successful are those who talk most of success. Those who speak most of illness have it. Yes, illness is also a creation of yours. Say what? Throughout history, we've always played the blame game. It's, it's his fault I didn't get the promotion. It's her fault I couldn't go to the game. It's everyone else's fault. I'm so depressed. Whatever it is, and this may be the hardest thing to truly get, it's your fault. And how do you account for inherited afflictions? Are you telling me that if a kid is born HIV positive, that's his or her own fault? One common argument I hear is, what about starving kids in Africa? How are they creating their starving reality? I would respond to that, that the Western way of life is not really allowing for everyone on the planet to live in the same abundance that the Westerners are, is it? We're using up all of the world's resources, hardly sharing anything unless they're paying a lot for it or if we're getting something out of it. What? Didn't you just say that- Throughout history, we've always played the blame game. It's your fault. Dude, stop contradicting yourself. You can't have it both ways. Because we are not in tune with ourselves, it may often seem that sometimes we don't have complete control over what it is we experience. Not in tune with- Do you know what that means? 
Can you explain it without using even more vague terms? I don't think you know what you're talking about. Once you have the experience that you feel is out of your control, now it's your turn to decide what you do next. You can allow the experience to get the best of you and drain your energy and move into a dense, unhappy place emotionally. Or you can decide to take it for what it is, an experience, and keep moving forward. Every dark cloud has a silver lining. And if you're looking for that silver lining, you'll have a much easier time finding it. Okay, maybe you're right. Maybe every cloud does have a silver lining. But what you're doing is you're advocating a really dangerous mindset. Basically, you're saying, look at the silver lining and be happy with that. Don't actually attempt to do something that might solve the problem. Look, if everyone were to just think happy thoughts and um, look at how much more the starving kids in Africa appreciate life now that they're so close to dying all the time, or if you, if you look at how much more food there is for us and, and how lazy we can be. Yeah, silver linings. Great. That doesn't solve the problem the kids in Africa are still starving. If everyone adopts the mindset that you're advocating, no problem will ever be solved. Many of us have heard of this thing called the Law of Attraction. Sadly, yes. Over the entire world, people have written in to tell of their amazing stories, where they really focused on having what they wanted, and got it through miracles and coincidences. So I guess this is the part where I have to explain some of the basics of statistics to you. Let's say we have a large population. We don't know how many, but a very large population. And uh, we have people think happy thoughts, and a thousand of them write in to tell us that they got what they wanted through pure coincidence. And hey, they thought happy thoughts. I guess it works. We're gonna end up with a sample that shows a 100% correlation between thinking happy thoughts and getting what you want through pure coincidence, but only because the selection process was rigged to give us a sample that shows this correlation. I mean, no one is gonna write in to say, hey, I thought happy thoughts and nothing happened. You can literally change everything in your life by willing it so. I know this from personal experience, and it's not hard to find others who have too. Same problem. It's not hard to find people who played the lottery and won, but that doesn't mean that everyone who plays the lottery wins. In fact, the vast, vast majority of the people who play the lottery don't win. But of course, we're not looking for the people who didn't win. We don't care about those. So we're going to end up with a sample consisting of 100% winners. That, that's not a proper application of statistics, because the sample does not represent the population. One continuous argument I hear from people who deny this law of attraction is, you don't just think things and change everything by sitting on your ass. To which I reply, exactly, you never stop moving. Just change your mindset and continue on with your life. Create your emotions in your mind, then move into them physically. Don't let your emotions control you. Pull your thoughts into the physical realm. So, let me see if I get this straight. Now you're saying, if you want a sandwich, make a sandwich. Before you said, if you want a sandwich, think happy thoughts, and just by pure coincidence, you'll get a sandwich. Make up your mind. What can you do to change things? Well, just be good to yourself. Sure, be good to yourself, but at what cost? Shirking responsibilities, not giving a thought for tomorrow, being a selfish asshole. What? Be good to yourself, sure, but be responsible. Think about the consequences of your actions or inactions. I want to bring up one more thing before I run out of time. There was a scientist in Japan a few years back who made an incredible discovery, but one that also went largely unnoticed and recognized by the global scientific community. Oh, please don't go there. Dr. Masaru Emoto discovered that by putting words on a side of a glass of water and freezing the water, you could change how the water would freeze into crystals. Of course. You went there. <sighs> There's a reason why this wasn't really given any attention by the mainstream scientific community, and it's that no one bought it. 
Emoto doesn't use proper scientific methodology. Basically, his experiments are prone to confirmation bias, and he can't reproduce the results of the experiments under controlled conditions. James Randi has been in touch with him and told him that all he has to do to win a million bucks for demonstrating anything supernatural is pass a double-blind test. Emoto has not responded to this challenge. As far as I'm concerned, that proves he's a fraud. Any honest scientist would want to put his idea to the test. And that's even without the promise of a million dollars if the test is successful. That's how science works. That's how you convince people in science. You present the evidence you're asked for. You put your ideas to the test, running the risk of falsifying them. You show the skeptics that you're right. You don't just accuse them of being closed-minded or conspiring to keep your discovery from becoming common knowledge. This is how science works. You have to be willing to demonstrate that you're right. And science, as I've said before, doesn't make exceptions. No, not even for dishonest people. Thoughts do not have supernatural powers, at least not that anyone's been able to demonstrate. And those who make such claims present nothing that comes close to qualifying as scientific evidence. All they present is a bunch of fallacies and experiments prone to confirmation bias, and when all else fails, they cry conspiracy. Which, as far as I'm concerned, removes all credibility from them. And you call this science? You don't know what science is.